It takes hard work, constant studying, and a desire to always do the right thing. Going the extra mile, doing something more than what you're required to do. Number one is that that is your passion. You gotta be nice. Be there when they really sit. Compassion. Perseverance. Consistency. Listening. Always keeping up. Caring for the patients. Just have fun doing it. I wanted to be a physician since I was age of six. My father was an insurance agent, and most of his clients were uh, physicians. When they went off to war in World War II, the residents and interns got drafted. Uh, my father stored a lot of their personal effects equipment and books in our garage. I would always get in there and take a look at everything they were doing and some of their books. And from that time on, since 1944-45, I always wanted to be a physician. In my case, it's genetic. My dad was a doctor. My brother's a doctor. Son's a doctor. Daughter's a doctor two grandsons, a granddaughter, and of course my sister is married to a doctor. Things were not quite as constrained as they are today as far as the HIPAA for privacy. So I, I actually got to see the patients sometimes with my dad. It was just a really a, a very, very interesting relationship you could see between the doctor and the patient. and That just really just was very important, uh, I think, in molding many of the thoughts and ideas I had for my future life. I'm guided by the principle that to give is to live. There's nothing better than taking care of your fellow human beings. It was my mom who finally persuaded me to pursue this honorable vocation. I believe that uh, I'm a people's person and uh, medicine basically is a combination of art and science and a lot of interaction with uh, people and the noble and that's what I want to do. I started here right after I finished my training and I've been practicing here and enjoying every minute of it. I uh, went to medical school when I was pretty young. I was 19 years old. When I came to Glendale Memorial, I was 29 years old. What I consider now as, as, a, as a kid, the patient know when they see you, your, your, your action, your attitude, you know, the way you smile at them, the way you talk to them. I think they, they really understand that they really, you are actually interested in them. That's the candy of our practice. Make a difference with people. I joined the staff in 67. 1969, went to the administrator, Mr. McNally, and said, we need to start a heart program here. We need a cardiac catheterization lab. He said, what's that? I said, that's where we study people's hearts. He says, no, I'm not interested. So I came back a couple of years later and I said, we need to start a heart program. And he said, okay, you can have this room in surgery. And so that's how it started. When I first came here, I, I didn't have much to do except pour coffee for the other doctors in the lounge. So they put me on the planning committee. What a, what a mistake. We got $23 million together and built the heart center. And uh, it was like it was like Field of Dreams, you know, build it and they will come, and they did. It was really doctor oriented, and uh, it was it was a very great experience, great place to practice medicine. I knew right away this was the hospital that I wanted it to be, and because the doctors were so kind and so uh, caring, communicate with your with your colleagues. Communication brings better patient care, and also you make a lot of friends. I also feel very blessed and very fortunate in a facility that uh, literally any field uh, beyond some of those uh, tertiary centers, we do have representatives. Uh, and uh, we have a good number of highly trained, compassionate physicians and that I can always count on. What is important, uh, especially in our field, since it is mostly a chronic problem, get the family involved from the very beginning. We care. So you're not just a number. You're not just a, a chart. You're a human being and we care. That's what makes us different here at Glendale Memorial. I always always say joke about to my wife that if Glendale Memorial Hospital go down under the uh, ocean, I'll go with them. You know, this is how much faith I have. The nursing staff uh, is uh, the biggest strength we have. They are the frontline workers. Uh, they are the ones that come between the doctors and the patients. 
and uh, uh, they portray us as being superb by doing what they do. I've been a patient here three times and the, and the nursing care is exceptional. And you can say, well, yeah, you're a doctor here, so you're going to get something that's different. No, I heard the fellow in the next room getting the same kind of care that I was getting. The funniest person in this hospital was Dr. Richard Allen. He had the knack to make people laugh. When he passed away, he had an auto accident. One thing that Dick always said, if he was ever to die, he always wanted to come back as a doctor's wife. Dick Allen, stand-up comedian, one of my best friends. Um, we literally try and hurry and make rounds to go up to the surgical lounge and watch Dick perform. I had done a uh, TOR prostate on this one particular physician. He was OBGYN. One of his patients went into labor and got out of his bed carrying his bag of water, fluids and his catheter to deliver a patient. I mean, this is how crazy some of us were at the time of taking care of patients. Dr. Goodwin, I'll never forget him because uh, my husband was the second to the last patient that he did the surgery. He was calling every night asking how he's doing and that I really could not forget. The patient that was, uh, I think, the most impressive uh, of all my patients was uh, Marsha Ray. At that time, uh, we were transitioning from, from ma total mastectomy uh, to preserving the breast and doing lumpectomies. And she was one of the first few patients that underwent that, uh, that uh, procedure here. She was cured of her breast cancer and uh, she um, uh, started a breast cancer support group and uh, she was so successful that we've named the uh, breast center in this hospital after her. Dr. Sandro Pulido, I always look up to him. I think he's very smart. He's uh, very uh, uh, well balanced and uh, he, he has a great uh, outlook for life. And I think he's a very wise man. When I was sick, I went through the emergency room and when I was admitted to the hospital, uh, the nurses were crying. <laughs> And so, you know, I don't know what that means, but uh, it seems like uh, they really care for me. I met some terrific people, and uh, one, of the, one of the guys was um, a guy named Fred Turrell, and he was, I think everybody would admit, sort of the premier surgeon uh, on this uh, side of town. Fred's idea of a great vacation was a houseboat on the American River fishing off the back, you know, and so, one year, his wife, Edith, said to him, Fred, we're going to Hawaii. The kids were out swimming one day and the wave came up. It dropped one of the kids onto some lava rock underneath the, underneath the water and he started bleeding, bleeding you know, fairly heavily. Fred always used to travel with the uh, fifth of Jack Daniels. So he gave his son a, a swig of this, poured some on the wound and sewed it up with his wife's sewing needle and dental floss. And that's the kind of guys that were here. In 68, Smoking was very prevalent. Even doctors smoked a lot. And, uh, I remember I had a pathologist would be doing pathology and smoking a cigarette while he's looking at cancer of the lung. Uh, and I said, when I want to put a no smoking sign in the office. He says, great, let's do that. A few physicians passed away, Dr. Richard Allen, Dr. Al Shader, and we, and we miss those guys. They should be here talking also. I think every member of this staff should become a leader. I didn't really understand what leadership was really all about until uh, we lost John Goodwin a number of years ago, he died early. The leader is that individual who inspires the team to make the dream a reality. And John helped us get that going with the Heart Center and others of us took up the, the mantle after that and uh, I think succeeded fabulously. I think the human kind is basically how you associate your patient in a very genuine way. In my career, I consider my patients my friends. Even till today, they come to me as friends. Do uh, the little extra things that make a difference uh, in, in, in the humanity of, of the situation. Love one another as I've loved you. And that's what I think Hello, Hello Human Kindness is about. We need to have a rapport with that patient that that we can develop with them, that they can sit down and talk to us about their 
their personal problems, to take care of the patient the way that they think that they are respected. You have to love the patient. One of the things I always did is I touched you when I talked to you. That was my connection to you. The responsibility we have with patients, we are taking care of the most important thing, their life. And I think that gives it to the, a true dedicated doctor, I need to know what's best for that patient. I liked making a difference in people's lives, either with small or large. All of the young people shoot for the, shoot for the stars, inspire other people, have a vision, build something. Don't ever stop building. I want to be first, and I want to be number one. And that's always been my goal in the Health and Heart Center. I want to be first to do whatever is being the latest, and I want to be the best at doing it. And with that in mind, we've really accomplished a lot. I enjoyed the, uh, uh, the company of my colleagues, uh, the employees, and uh, most of all, the community. To help people relieve of their uh, sufferings is a great satisfaction. I read the other day about a, a lady who is a very accomplished rock star. She said every day she's sad. She, she's depressed every day. Excuse me, you have a billion dollars, you know? Go help some kids in Africa, all right? And then you won't be depressed. Not worry about uh, uh, the, the future, but to enjoy the present. I could not get Pick a better profession. I absolutely love it. I, uh, I can't think of doing anything else. I would do it all over again. What a great ride.